Okay, so here's the idea. We're going to take a Node MCU. It's an ESP8266 chip with somewhat of a Arduino clone. It accepts Arduino code, but it has the Wi-Fi chi chip built in. They cost uh, three, four, or five bucks, something like that, uh, in bulk online. And we are going to connect it to a breadboard that's going to have two Adafruit Max 13850 thermocouple amplifiers. These 13850s run on what's called one wire, which means we can daisy chain them and use one data pin on the Node MCU. We will tap power 3.3 volts directly off the Node MCU. And we can also give ground. The thermocouple then will have each thermocouple takes one port off for the thermometer. And at least in my application, we have a meat smoker and today we're cooking chicken. One thermometer is going to do ambient temperature of the grill and the other is going to go into the chicken breast and give us an internal chicken temperature so that we know when it's done. Now because this is wireless, this is going to transmit to the broker We need to use a broker in this instance because the Node MCU only allows TLS 1.1. We're eventually getting over here to AWS IoT, and it only takes TLS 1.2. We need the broker to make that connection for us. The receiving end of this is going to be another node MCU. A little bit simpler of a setup where all we need off of this, three wires, and we're going to go to three NeoPixels. Two for the meat sensor and one for the grill sensor. Each of those NeoPixels is tied in. Once again, they run off of a one-wire concept where we could have thousands of these NeoPixels in line running one data wire, and each one will be programmatically allotted a serial number as a distance away starting from zero. So it will need power, ground, and data. The broker being on the network is going to wirelessly send the signal of the temperature. So what we have is the transmitter is going to query the sensors simultaneously, pull it back through the amplifier, send the data signal wirelessly through the broker, who's going to push it up to AWS. The broker is going to push it down to the other node MCU, which is going to calculate the code, parse out the message from the MQTT server, which is the combination of the broker and the AWS IoT portal. And it's going to parse out that message, pulling out the sensor ID, because we have two and the temperature of each and send it to the individual NeoPixels and they will be color coded based on the temperature. So here's the first part of the layout. These are all the individual parts that will be needed. Got some Node MCUs. This is how they come in the package. The headers are pre-soldered on. 
and this is basically an Arduino clone with the ESP8266 chip already soldered on. The transmitter is going to have multiple parts so it's easiest to work with a small breadboard. There's a couple of different types of sensors. This is an Adafruit glass beaded sensor. Uh, the actual sensor part is that little piece right there. This one's rated to uh, something like 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. These are some Chinese, uh, you can get them on Alibaba, some Chinese uh, knockoffs or uh, cheap sensors. Uh, this, uh, this one is going to be the grill sensor. It has ends that look like this, so it already comes pre-molded with the clips. And then this one will be the actual meat sensor. Uh, this one is, of course, waterproofed. And I think these, both of these sensors, each one cost um, three bucks, four bucks maybe on eBay, and probably even cheaper on Alibaba. Adafruit sells uh, some new sensor uh, thermocouples, so these are called one wires, and this is the this is the Max 31850. Bunch of jumper cables and uh, some jumpers that we'll need for the breadboard, and then the LEDs. I already have a couple of them wired up. These are called NeoPixels. They are 3.3 three to five volts. Um, they can go anywhere in between that so it makes them pretty flexible. They either come in a strip like this and you just break them apart. These are already broken apart. A strip of ten I think was up at like a dollar fifty or two dollars on eBay. They come in a strip of one hundred. I got this for ten dollars so they make them in bulk for about ten cents a piece. And you just peel it out of their plastic housing here and it's, it's pretty much the same thing. They get wired in a daisy chain fashion like this so you just need the power ground and then one data cable and the Arduino is able to pick off of one pin up to hundreds if not thousands of these and you just address them individually and when, when I get into the code I'll show that here in a minute. Now that it's all connected, let's put it to work. So each sensor is going to send a couple of bytes of text. The first byte's going to be the sensor number, and the rest is going to be the temperature. It's going to send that every 15 seconds. This is the grill setup. You can see the orange and black thing at the top there. That's a commercial temperature wireless gauge that I bought off of Amazon for about $60. I'm going to put the meat sensors from both the one I built and the one from the commercial kit, uh, put it in the chicken. There's the ambient thermometer, close the lid up. Double check the temps, looks good. Back to the workshop and you can see the digital display shows the temperature. It's kind of hard to read on the screen but it's there. And then the Node MCU with the NeoPixels color coded and I'll explain the color coding in the code when we get to that here in a minute. So it's towards the end of cooking the chicken now and I'm going to show the what's showing up on the MQTT client on Amazon. You can see off to the right hand side there that's the broker that's sending the messages back and forth. 
from the Node MCU to AWS. It's kind of hard to read the temperature, but you can see 155.30 to 158, and 257 to 253, 257. It looks like it's uh, only a few degrees off for both the sensors, so pretty accurate either way. After everything was said and done, I had the time to get out my laser cutter, build a little box, and this is the end product. And what you see there are the plexiglass that I etched with the laser cutter and the LEDs, the NeoPixels. Uh, this is fast forwarded, that's why they're blinking. These are, they're actually um, changing, the temperature's changing that I'm sending the test signal to it and the Node MCU is sending the color codes to the NeoPixels. And that's how the color indicator works from the box. We'll take a quick look at the code. Uh, running out of time on a 15 minute time limit, so most of the interesting stuff you'll want to go look at the slide deck and go into the actual code itself. Two different .ino files, one for each the transmitter, one for the receiver. Lots of snippets of code taken from different places. It's all archived in the slide deck. The way that each the receiver and the transmitter connect to the Wi-Fi, how they connect to the MQTT broker, that is all the same exact code. The only difference is one's pulling from the thermometers and sending that MQTT publish message, and the other is retrieving or subscribing to the MQTT broker pulling that information, parsing out that information, and converting it to a float so that it can do the calculation of the uh, if and else if statements so that it can be color coded. Here's a quick snapshot of the IoT portal in Amazon. You can see that uh, lots of things to go set up. Not No time to talk about it right now, but uh, it's all spelled out intricately in the Word document for the final thing. Uh, one thing I'll say is the uh, certificates were not very straightforward. Uh, when you're downloading the certificates from AWS IoT, you have to take great care in what you name them, where you place them, and make sure that your policies are all uh, up to date. Also, you need to add a whole lot of libraries to make everything work. One of them is OneWire. The other one is the Dallas Temp. Uh, both of those are readily available. But to use the Node MCU at all, you have to go into the settings for your uh, Arduino IDE and add the uh, particular JSON file that's given to you. Uh, that link is uh, in the Word document that is provided with this. Once you add that, you can add the Node MCU or the ESP8266. Um, both of them fall under the same Arduino core and choose that board for the setup. You also need to get the serial UART drivers and the there's two different links in the Word document that will help you find that stuff as well. So the video shown here, I'm going through and installing all the necessary libraries. There's uh, probably five or six of them. AWS IoT has a bunch of its own. Uh, you can push directly to DynamoDB straight from the IDE or straight from the uh, Arduino device itself. I didn't have that set up because I was uh, pushing through the broker. So in summary, there's uh, a lot to look at. Um, it's cheap, but it works, and it was uh, a lot of fun to build.